Hey, Gray Steel, Sully here with the Barbell Prescription. And there are many inputs to the observable phenomena of force production and performance. Previous training, sleep, nutrition, age, genetics, fiber size, rate coding, form, state of health and wellness, you name it. But the athlete's will and mood are also critical. Today, I want to say a few words about our emotional approach to the barbell. And I hope you'll chime in with your own thoughts and experiences about how your mood and attitude affects your lifting. And give us a like while you're at it. Now, as usual, I'm going to approach this topic the long way around because I'm just annoying that way. I'm going to talk about my own emotional approach to training which is pretty much my emotional approach to a big part of my life, taking tests. For much of my adult life, I have been a professional test taker. In college, I had to master the art of taking tests, of course, and I had to prepare for special tests like the MCAT. Obviously, med school was at least as much about passing tests as it was about learning medicine. But when med school was over, the test taking had only just begun. Then it was USMLE parts one, two, and three, and residency in-service exams every year, and exams to credential for this or that procedure or policy. And then there was a specialty board certification exam, which for emergency medicine came in two parts over two years. Then there were the yearly lifelong learning exams required to maintain board certification, and every 10 years a new certification exam. And little exams were just about to maintain my education rights. Whew. So yeah, I was a professional test taker, and I learned a lot of tricks along the way, including tricks about how to handle the ubiquitous multiple choice exam. One of the tricks I learned early on was to harness my emotions. This is not what you might think. It did not mean, in my case, harnessing a sense of calm or confidence. That is the correct approach for some, but not for others and not for me. I learned with experience that my best effective, that is to say emotional approach to a written exam, was one of tightly controlled fury. I am an angry test taker. I functioned my best when I was just moderately pissed off at the exam writer. I mean, the guy was clearly being an asshole, writing the question like that, using those stupid words, trying to trick me with those ridiculous foils, asking me, me, if I knew the difference between a Lafort 1 fracture and a Lafort 2 fracture? Yeah, I know the difference, punk. Suck on that, loser. Now, incoherent rage doesn't work here. In fact, it rarely works for anything, except, of course, racking up a long list of criminal charges. But in test taking, a placid calm doesn't work for me either. It has to be a controlled ferocity, a sort of calculated wrath that keeps me aggressive yet focused. Now, this is not my best effective strategy for all endeavors. In martial arts practice, for example, I'm at my best when I'm serene, even when sparring. For writing, I try to get into a whimsical or playful mood. For chores, I try to channel my inner marine, focused and dutiful and not really emotional at all. But when it comes to test taking, I'm at my best when I actually cultivate a vicious but focused antagonism with the unseen examiner, who is actually probably a nice person. But I don't care. Screw him. And the same goes for lifting. I am an angry lifter. This is just what works best for me. I perform my best when I am deeply, ferociously annoyed with the barbell. Yes, of course, there is a Zen aspect to lifting, a requirement that we be utterly here and now with the load on our back or in our hands. And I am. I am here and now. And I am pissed. This bar is unreasonably heavy. It is being heavy just to annoy me, to defy me, to stop me from getting where I want to go. And this bar is going to be sorry. Right. I cultivate this feeling. I never disrespect the bar. And I never let my fury with the bar drive me to act irrationally. I'll show you, Mr. Barbell. I'll load 20 pounds over my target heavy set. See how you like that. Now that's dumb. 
Then the barbell wins. And the orthopedic surgeons. Instead, I cultivate a tightly calibrated, revenge is the dish best served cold attitude that keeps me focused on my adversary and ramped up to dominate it. This may not be the best approach for you. There are angry lifters like me, but there are also calm lifters and laughing lifters and zen lifters and even sad lifters who all do very well when they are in their proper effective zone. And of course, some people are mercurial. This way on heavy day, that way on light day. That's all good. The important thing is to realize the effective approach to the bar that works for you and cultivate that. Once again, the training log comes to the rescue. Log your effective state and track it, like any other variable, and see if you can't find correlations with your performance. You will. Then use that information. Now, just to be clear, none of this is to be taken as suggesting that your mood decides whether you train or not. That would be completely missing the point. If you are a happy lifter and you're in a bad mood today, that does not mean that you skip training. It means that you just may not be happy training today. But it also means that you're going to give the bar a chance to make you happy, which can totally happen. Like I said, I'm an angry lifter, but coming into the gym happy doesn't matter for me. No matter how good a mood I'm in, the bar always manages to piss me off at some point. That actually makes me kind of happy. Mammals and our crazy emotions. <laughs> We're wacko. The point is that training and your mood constitute a two-way street. You need to learn to calibrate that back and forth to get the most out of your time in the gym. You and the bar put each other in the right place. And that's just one of the skills of being an athlete. Learn to cultivate and control the effective state that yields the best productive work under the bar. This is where training transcends the physical and enters the realm of self-discovery. That is a good thing. Thanks for watching.